NFR Extra is a weekly podcast that focuses on the Wrangler National Finals Rodeo and features icons that embody the rodeo and Western lifestyle. When you see like the the, the people that just and then you get the ones those days that have never bet before in their life. They walk up and they go, I've never done this, so I want Tampa Bay. Okay, do you want them with the points? Do you want them without the points? Do you want... What's that mean? <laughs> okay. I, I say this. It's not that they watch for the wreck. And it's not that they watch a bull rider to get for the, for the throw off. They watch to watch us be Superman. Before you get, even step over the chute, you have to have that healthy fear but you have to have that okay you're in that you're in your world now you got to stay completely focused because if you're a bull rider you're putting your hand in this thing and you're not paying attention this kid's you know got some horns on that thing and it's a it's a bull that's known to pick his head up in the chute you better know that that's what you're having for dinner yeah, Horn. yeah, yeah you're, you're, going, you're going to have it for breakfast and lunch and dinner for the next couple weeks hey this is ryan bingham and you are listening to nfr extra so the party has begun this morning, and our guest, I wish we were recording everything that we were talking about just a few minutes ago, but Brendan Gaughan is here with us, and Brendan, you've got a lot of things going on, but let's let's start at the beginning, okay? And we're going to go in Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. <laughs> okay. So uh, tell us tell <clears throat> us there about, was light. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> tell us about growing up in Vegas with your family. Well, first, I got to say I'm the most jealous guy in the room right now. Uh, I've been to voice classes for my stuff, and I am like so jealous of both of you guys right now. I'm oh, like on, way man. higher pitched. Um, <laughs> no, so I mean, look, uh, this is born and raised for me. This is home. This is, to me, everybody says, oh, you know, Vegas, growing up in Vegas, oh, I'm like, look, it was Leave it to Beaver. Dad was home every night at 6 o'clock. The last seat was the one next to him because if you held your fork wrong, he was going to stab you. I had two big brothers. <laughs> Um, that were were ten and eight years older than me. So as an as an eight year old with an eighteen year old and a sixteen year old, if you wanted to eat, you ate as fast as you can because your brothers and we had a, another like all, there was always a friend living with us, and so you had to learn to like get in there or else you weren't getting food. <laughs> yeah, uh, Mama made an army. I mean, my mom cooked every night. And she made an army, but to me, it was just the same thing as anybody grew up in Texas, Oklahoma, North Carolina, South Carolina. Just it was leave it to Beaver. Yeah, uh, you know, you came home, Dad worked. You came home, you might be allowed to have Wheel of Fortune or Jeopardy on the television. Otherwise, there was no TV and it was, you know, conversation at the table and yeah. you had family dinner. We had a round table just like this. Actually, I still have that table. Um, I love my round table. It's it's an old wooden, got the burn from Christmas 83 in the center of it still. Um, <laughs> and the knot in the back of my head. For- <laughs> no, the, yeah, no, that, that, that's from the bottom of the table when you used to, you know, you go g- grab, try to grab something and dad would, bam, you know, pull you up and smack the back. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Um, but no, to me, growing up in Vegas was, normal you know that uh, yes you had casinos yes there's a picture of me at six years old sitting on a sports book counter taking money from people and handing it to jimmy vaccaro and my father and handing them sport super bowl t-shirts you know i mean <laughs> okay but to me that was dad's job yeah you know if you went with dad remember being you know three four five years old and at his old royal Inn casino the very first one for the barbary and he'd come in and you know he's carrying his baby boy in his hands he wants to stop talking to somebody he'd put me on an open blackjack table just sit on the table but that it was a different era of sure, you know yeah. things and and so to me that was just daddy's work right it wasn't you know your dad in in the horse industry your dad's in the in the you know restaurant business your dad's whatever it is that was just to me normal so it didn't have any different connotation everybody goes oh it had to be so I'm like it was just normal yeah I, we are having a conversation I can't remember if it was one who it was here in in LVE but uh, they're talking about uh, interviewing workers at casinos. Mm-hmm. And asking them who they work for, you know, oh, we work for X casino or Y casino or whatever. And it was like greater than 50% of people at the South Point said, I work for Michael Gone. Yeah. And so that like, y- you look at how that trans transitions from the home raise, the home life that he made so important with his actual kids. Mm-hmm. And then the environment that he creates there. And you feel like you go to the South Point. I mean, there is something weird about it to where you're just like, this feels <laughs> nice well, here. You know, there's very few over the era of Las Vegas. There's there's a few places that when you say, where do you work for? Yeah. You know, people will say, oh, I work at Caesars. Oh, I work here. But there was a couple, you know, Jackie gone. You know, you work yeah. for Jackie gone. Right. You know, it didn't matter where it was. You work for Jackie gone. If yeah. you work for my dad at the Barbary Coast, the Gold Coast, the Sun Coast, the, you work for Michael gone. Right. And, and we knew, every, I mean, 
the old joke of, uh, you know, we, uh, we have employees that are sold. They've changed my diapers. <laughs> no, that's <laughs> literal. Serious. That's literal, not figurative. Um, matter of fact, uh, a guy named Greg Pike, who he's a big cowboy. If, if you guys ever hang around the South Point or if anybody knows my family knows Mr. Pike, uh, six foot eight. He's been with us 50 years now. Wow. wow. And when my dad bought the Royal Inn Casino in 1971, two, Greg Pike was a dishwasher at the Royal Inn when he when him and Frank Toady bought it. And he is still our purchasing director today. And Mr. Pike still babysat my dad in the desert. Like when my dad raced in the off-road back in the day, people don't know my dad raced off-road forever since the 60s. No kidding. And when my dad raced, Mr. Pike was one of his chase crew. Well, I've been racing for 30 plus years. Mr. Pike is still the man that comes into the desert and takes care of me. Like there, there's stories years ago of Mr. Pike and I was lost in Mexico where truck broke down, no radio con. No, Mr. Pike was 32 hours driving up and down the highway. He was not getting done until he found where the hell I was. No joke. And so to this day, Mr. Pike still comes down. When my dad still races and does his Mexico trips, Mr. Pike still goes down and babysits dad. Mr. Pike comes and babysits me. You know, we have family that have been literally with us my whole life. And that's, it, it did start with my grandfather. Yeah. It was a, it was a grand, my grandfather's thing. And, and look, when you come to the South Point, if you walk into a casino and everybody's, <clears throat> I guess the frown really doesn't really work on radio, but <laughs> you know, but you know what I'm talking about when yes. you come in and, and the dealers aren't happy or the, or the waitresses or the cocktail servers or the, or the bus boys and everybody walks around. It's just, it's their job. They walk through, you know, okay. It, it doesn't, it, you go great at our place. You know, yes, I, there, there are, there are servers for us that have been with us 25, 30 years. There are, there are bus boys that have been with us 20 plus years and you know them by name. You know, when they come up, you, you, you give them a hug, you say, Hey, how's things going? How's the kids? And, and you know them. So it's, it is different for us and our family. And it's always been that way. And it started with my grandfather. Yeah. So you touched on uh, racing and tell us for those that don't know your background, tell us a little bit more about as you grow up, you get into sports and then into racing. Get, give us a little bit of background on that. Well, for my family, there was two big things growing up. There was horsepower and horse poop. And <laughs> we, we always had both, you know, that was kind of, we, we, we had both ends of it. My mom, my, even my mom was into horses. Uh, my father, of course, I mean, there's pictures from the Hildorado rodeo days back. Mm -hmm. there, there's a, actually, a, we posted a great picture a couple of years ago on Instagram of me sitting on dad's lap on a saddle. I had to be maybe six, seven years old. It's the Hildorado parade and, you know, sitting there with dad. We've always had both. Uh, I gravitated towards the horsepower um, intentionally. I worked at my mother's ranch in high school. I was 15. She left me in a 10 acre field pulling weeds. And it's Vegas, it's summer. No, and thank you. I'm carrying a trailer, you know, through the 10 acre field, picking weed out of it. And, <laughs> and that weeds. Right. <laughs> Raise that. Not nowadays, you got to <laughs> clarify. 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 And I see mom driving away at the end of the day. And this is before cell phones. And I'm like, mom just freaking left me. Oh. And 10 minutes later, she, and I mean, I'm, I'm it's 115 degrees. Sure. I'm, you know, I'm like, oh my God. She comes back. So I decided I got myself fired from horse poo poo. <laughs> and I went to horsepower. I went to the race shop. And for me, it worked out very well. But for us, it was sports. We, 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 only my sister really gravitated towards the horses. My brothers and all of us went sports and racing and, and did that sort of stuff. I'm the only one that tried to do it at a high level. The rest of them played high school sports, raced in high school. They even raced after college and stuff, but they did their own things in business and stayed in the casino business. For me, I, I went racing. I, I was good at it from an early age and, and, it just kind of was something that I gravitated towards. And I was fortunate enough that I had a father that was willing to support me for some of it. And I had great people, uh, famous race car drivers, Walker Evans was, you know, a big mentor of mine and Parnelli Jones and those guys that were friends of my father's that could guide me a little bit. And so for me, I ended up going racing for a bunch of years instead of horse. Pooping. Yeah. <laughs> so I, didn't, I didn't want to be polite here. You know, I can't say that. Yeah. So there's no, no fear factor at all because no, I, there's fear. No, no. I, I mean, there's fear. I, I drove, my mom used to have this Volvo when I was oh, in stop, high school. Stop. Stop. Just listen. <laughs> hear me out. Oh, I, I love this. I, right, I'm I went, ready. I went 110 on a back road one time yeah, and yeah. I was terrified. Number you one, been. getting caught. You should have been. But number two, you know, if you pop a tire at a hundred miles an hour, like you're, you're not know, saving it. No, exactly. No. You know, so that, that to me has always been one of those things is. People watch NASCAR just like they watch bull riding for the wrecks. Like, obviously, you want to see somebody you win, yeah. but, yeah. you know, there's got to be a fear factor in that. So what I always say is, and, and I say this, it's not that they watch for the wreck, and it's not that they watch a bull rider to get for the, for the throw-off. 
they watch they watch to watch us be Superman. They want to see that big, spectacular, fiery crash, and they want to see you get out and tip your hat and wave right. and go, Touché. "Look yeah. at me." They they want to see that rider get you know get hung up for a second. Here come the bull savers. The clowns jump in. They rip his hand off, and the kid gets up, grabs his hat, wipes it on his chaps, and gets a little half limp out. And here come the Justin Sports Medicine team, and he waves to the crowd. Yeah, they want to see us be Superman. They don't want to see us get hurt. Right. They don't want to see us, you know, but they want, they, we seem superhuman to them because look at what we do. Right. You know, I flipped a car at Talladega in 20, whatever it was, 19 or something, landed on my wheels and got out and laughed and said, you know, the Russian judge docked me for not for the landing. It wasn't perfectly <laughs> straight. They want to see that sort of thing. And so that that's for me, but there's a lot of, that. there is fear. I have known drivers that had no fear. They did not last long. It's healthy fears. Right. Every bull rider has a healthy fear before he gets on that bull. You know, every every race car driver should have a healthy fear. The ones that don't are the ones you don't remember because they didn't yeah. make it long. Yeah. That's got to be something just inches away, a couple hundred yeah. miles an hour. I mean, that has got to be, you've got to be so honed in on what you're doing that your margin for error does well, not exist. Th- I, you know, I was one of the more learned race car drivers for the last bunch of years. And I used to love, there's a very famous old Ernest Hemingway quote. There's only three real athletes in the world, mountaineers, bull riders, and race car drivers. The rest <laughs> are just playing with sticks and balls. Yeah. <laughs> and, and when, when you look at it, the, 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 mis- the ramification of a mental mistake in my world is drastic. You know, if I, if I do stop focusing at Talladega, where I'm one inch from all four sides from somebody we're pushing and I got people telling me things doing, they have to have this, you know, you have to be paying attention to these things around you. You make, Hey, what am I doing for dinner? Yeah. You know, that don't work. And the same thing with, you know, once he, once, even before he puts his hand in that rig and what if a, a bareback kid, a, a saddle bronc kid, any of the guys that are on rough stock. Yeah. Before you get even step over the shoot, you have to have that healthy fear, but you have to have that. Okay. You're in that, you're in your world now. You know what you're doing. You got to stay completely focused because if you're putting your hand, if you're a bull rider, you're putting your hand in this thing and you're not paying attention. This kid's, you know, got some horns on that thing and it's a, it's a bull that's known to pick his head up in the chute. Well, you better know that. Yeah. That's what you're having for dinner. Yeah. Horn. yeah. You're, you're going you're gonna to have it for breakfast and lunch and dinner for the next couple of weeks. You know what I mean? It's going to get you. Lost so your grill. You, yeah. you got to pay attention to those things when you're doing that. And those are, that's part of the sport. Uh, I played college football. I played college basketball and had a lot of the guys that I played college sports with would come to races. And as a race car driver, remember, I'm a billboard, right? I mean, I got a fire suit on. It's, you know, I'm bought and paid for, right? I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm a whore, man. You, you want me to, <laughs> I, I will talk about your stuff. Yeah. And as soon as you stop paying it. me, yeah. I'm talking about the next guy. <laughs> yeah. And so you're sitting there and, and a pre-race, you know, for basketball, when we play basketball, you're sequestered. You're in your locker room. Nobody's allowed in. Guys all got their headphones on and they're getting all serious. Got that look. And they go out and do their practice, their warm ups, and they got layup lines and nobody's allowed to be near them. In the racing world, I've got 55 sponsors next to me that I got a glad hand. I got to make sure that the customers they brought take pictures and smile. Or you've been out and watched those things. I mean, you go to those things with Las Vegas events. You guys do a lot of that. And, and we have to be there. They got dignitaries that want to meet the driver. Yeah. They come out. Kodak brings, you know, the executive vice president and his kids and and the guy that won award. You have to be this guy that's talking the whole time and hey, hugging, grabbing hands, do the national anthem, the prayer, everybody high fives, great, thanks for coming, pictures. And then you get in the car and do your job. And all my basketball buddies used to go, How the hell do you do that? I go, what, what, where's your pre? What's your I go, yeah, I got about two and a half minutes, three minutes. <laughs> yeah. That's what, but that, but that's the yeah. the bull rider jumping over the chute. We don't have well, the, look! Look at any 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 rough stock rider. You're sitting there on the back of the chute. You're joshing with the stock contractors. You got your buddies. You're making dumb bets. You're looking at you know people in the stands. You're mm-hmm. doing the whole thing, and then your your animal rides in that chute. Now you have your your two minutes of go time. Yeah, you get locked in, and that's that's the fun part about our two sports that are so similar. Is we have to do these other things until and then there's that short window that we have to get ourselves right. And you have to learn how to turn it on and off very quickly. It's game time. And you don't perform, you go down the line. You know I mean? Yeah. You don't have the leeway of like, oh, he had a bad day. You have a no. couple bad races. You're at, and, there, and there you go. Well, so. listen, in my world, now these kids get waivers and, you know, Denny Hamlin this week announced that he, he's, he does, he's a little sore from the wreck last weekend. So he's not going to race the other race that he was going to mm-hmm. race. And I'm like, when I, when I grew up, 
you know, Louis Field. I remember old Louis, mm-hmm. broken arms, broken shoulders, you know, one eye swollen. He's like, I'm on that, I'm on yeah. that animal. Don't you worry, I got it. Yeah, that's what we had to do. You wanted to get paid. You wanted to, now in my world, if I get out of that car because man, my I got a broken shoulder blade. I broke it at Phoenix, big wreck, two ribs, shoulder blade, wrist. I'm like, man, I gotta, I gotta race in five days. Well. I'm not going to let them put you in the race car, right? Right. Now you're auditioning for my job. Yeah. This is what pays me. I I didn't get waivers. If, if I'm running for the championship, I got to be back in that car. I mean, it happened to Cole Trickle, you know, with Russ Wheeler. <laughs> That's right. That's yeah. right. See what happened. <laughs> hey, see? Never never give Russ a chance. Yeah. Cal Naughton Jr., you know what I mean? Kurt Busch, Cal. Yeah. <laughs> well, so, so that's a, a great tie to your brand. So City Light Shine, tell us about the... The foundation of that and how it got started. Yeah, I'm, it's a really bad cliche. Uh, the guy that is the distiller of City Light Shine, we're a moonshine brand. We make moonshine. The guy that's my distiller was a NASCAR official. I'm a NASCAR driver. And allegedly, allegedly, we may have drank some of his moonshine back in the day. <laughs> Fully allegedly. Fully Before it also the po- race. It also powered the car. Hey, you never know when. <laughs> 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 that slight fear might have been yeah. pushed off from that. Remember, it's all legend. It's all legend. There's no, no, you know, allegedly drank some. And my father allegedly may have drank some blueberry back in the day. I mean, all, all alleged. Yeah, hearsay. And when I was retiring, Mr. Dolan was a NASCAR official that was kind of at the end of it. He, he was getting worn out of the NASCAR side. And Dolan kind of went, you know, dad loved allegedly this blueberry he thought this would be a great idea this blueberry flavor he think he would love it and i really like the idea of cherry lemon it just really sounded like a refreshing crisp yeah. yeah yeah so i i was like you know maybe we should do this and dad said look into it well when michael gone says look into something <laughs> that does not mean you know hey a give suggestion. me a suggestion yeah give me a cursory yeah. look at this and some of what the numbers are it's hey guess what this is your new job i'm like okay <laughs> So uh, I screwed up retirement worse than anybody, and I'm a bad cliche. We're a NASCAR driver and a NASCAR official that make moonshine. So uh, I, I always joke and go, yeah, it's, it's, it is really cheesy, but yeah. we do. <laughs> and it, that's how it started, was literally this alleged stuff we used to drink. Dolan moved out. To, I'm born and raised here. So, I mean, I'm retiring. My kids are going to school here. This is where I'm coming back here. I'm not right. North Carolina. I'm, I'm coming back home. Right. Dolan is a, a, a Southern guy. He was a Wilkes County guy making, you know, and I go, you want to make it? You got to come out west. Yeah. And so Dolan went, pack up the car, hun. <laughs> and they they came out here, and that is the starts of City Light Shine. It was literally NASCAR official retiring, NASCAR driver retiring, and we started making the moonshine that we allegedly drank. So tell us about all the flavors. Well, so that gets a little more difficult now we're sitting here. Uh, we just added a bunch more. We do a lot of, we sell a lot of places, and we had our, our six original, which of course, original, which is just shine yep. just just straight shine 80 proof this is the hard part when people hear moonshine you guys think it too we already joked about yeah. running your car on it right right that's what people think she's sitting here going oh. yeah but that's what people think is this is put hair on your chest your cousin in kentucky and you know we used to make white this stuff lightning. white lightning yeah. <laughs> and yeah exactly so you can't really dolan's stuff was never that way you know as a nascar driver everybody used to bring us their shine popcorn sutton the world's most right. famous moonshiner mm-hmm. popcorn used to come in the garage and all of us and ask her he you know hey and i oh, popcorn thanks man Ooh, whoo, yeah good and i go oh my god yeah and then i turn around <laughs> and i <I'd>, <laughs> yeah i'd come home and say hey popcorn sutton shine i give it as gifts to friends because this is popcorn sutton shine this yeah is, this is famous stuff right here and i'm like oh thank god <laughs> smooth <laughs> and so dolan's was the only stuff we drank so it was like well hell you know let, let, let's make this stuff but we got to make it for the mat you can't make it where Nobody wants to drink it. We're trying to be commercial. So it's 80 proof, just like normal vodkas, tequilas, anybody else. Yes, sir. And the other thing is, what do people do with moonshine? They get they don't know what to do. So we have to give them a little coaching on it because people are scared and they don't know what to do with it. So we did the original. And then we did, of course, the alleged cherry lemon that was so good. Um, allegedly. But it is really good now yeah. in the real world. <laughs> uh, the one that will never get discontinued is blueberry because allegedly my dad liked it and he had a great idea to make it. So blueberry is his favorite. And then we also have a, a flavor we call the, the fireball killer, uh, salted caramel. Okay. Ooh. Because nobody really likes to drink fireball. You just drink it because you go, ooh, my buddies are out. Let's go drink fireball. Yeah. Woo! Uh, uh. And that's what you do it for. Uh, so we made one that's easy to drink. And then we have the rest of uh, raspberry, strawberry, and blue, or raspberry and strawberry. So we did a bunch of berries. We did all that. We've had those for the last six years. This year, my father wanted us to do some new flavors for the South Point 400 slot promotion. So we came up with five new flavors. 
we did salted caramel on steroids. We went candy bar. Oh, boy. So it's salted caramel, chocolate, and peanut butter. Yeah, no, it's like dessert. Uh, it yeah, almost, no, it's, like, it's, why does that sound good in a milkshake? It, it is, actually. Oh, we, my gosh. I, we did take a steak and shake milkshake the other oh. day and mix it, and it was stupid. Um, adult milkshakes. It, it's, it's super good. And then, you know, we have a lot of Asians in Las Vegas. We have Gentian Restaurant at the South Point, and mm-hmm. everybody was asking me for lychee. Lychee. I'm not really sure which way we had a joke before we yeah. got on the air, which way you say it. I'm not sure. I'm going to say it both every time. Lychee, so. lychee, likey. <laughs> lychee, like. Oh, I like that. Uh, so we made a lychee flavored, which real, smells really good. I'm not sure what you want to mix with it, but we'll let the bartenders deal with that. Uh, a key lime, uh, plum, and orange. So we did these new flavors for this deal, and that's what we're doing for the South Point is five new flavors for the South Point for 100 bottle promotion. And it's the key lime. I got a bet with my with one of my buddies in the office. He thinks orange is going to sell better than key lime. I think key lime is going to sell better with orange. So anybody listening to this, make sure you go buy key lime, not orange, because <laughs> I got to win my bet. It's a big bet. One dollar. Uh, Trading place. What's your favorite way to drink the shine? So, okay. Listen, Besides milkshakes. I, I'm boring. I love my cherry lemon. Yeah. And to me, it's just an old school sipper. You know, it's you pour cherry lemon, you sit there, you hang out with your buddies, and it's a sipper. Neat. And yeah, just, yeah. I like it out of the freezer, you know, and, and just cold as a sipper. Yeah. Um, it's funny now that we do this for a living, you go to tastings and you see people that say they're whiskey guys, they're this guys, and they take a, a little shot of it neat and they throw it down. You're like, you're not a whiskey drinker. <laughs> you're, you're an alcoholic. No, that's not what you do. You, you don't, you don't go grab a good thing, a Pendleton or a good thing, you know, a, a crown yeah. XR or something like that and take it and just throw it down. It, they're sippers. That's yeah. what you do. And, and you get these guys, you go to tastings, they go, oh, God. I'm like, yeah, well, you just did an ounce and a half of, yeah. a, of a straight shot of moonshine. Yeah. No joke, it's not going to taste good. Yeah. You know, it, it's, it's a sipper. You just killed yourself. So I like it just neat. But the problem is now you got to make stuff with it. I'm not crafty. So I'm not the guy that can go and make a 15 pour, you know, hey, I'm going to make crema de leche and blue curacao and all these things. I, not me. So me, I like we, we, we made three flavors, cherry lemon, salted caramel, and key lime that go great with just Pepsi and Coke. I mean, just literally, yeah. it, it, it tastes like a vanilla Coke, a cherry Coke, or just Coke and lime. You know, it's just it, right there. Perfect. I mean, it, it's just simple to make. Uh, we, then the bartenders at the South Point make some cool stuff. They can do things. Um, but the best thing we got, I'll tell you what, we make a mule with our blueberry. That is nice. ridiculous. A blueberry yeah. mule. There PT's Pubs yeah. in town used to have it on their menu. We're trying to get them to get it back on their menu, but... Just a mule with our blueberry instead of vodka, and it's yeah. so good. Um, it, it raspberry and blueberry made great mules, and it's funny how certain things work. Tried a strawberry, <laughs> tried like cherry lemon, <laughs> no bueno. But the only but raspberry and blueberry huh. made a hell of a mule. Hey, so blue, blueberry, blueberry, always gonna be blueberry. <laughs> 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 you, I, I, blueberry. Kidding, hey, there's something on your nose. <laughs> yeah, <thanks>. <laughs> I <laughs> love blueberry. <laughs> Yeah, I just envisioned like That's why I'm cherry wearing lemon jacket. with the cherry limeade situation yeah. going on, like a summer drink. Yeah. They they if you make lots, you can do we do a margarita with cherry lemon, you know, and, and when we do tastings, we literally just take like whatever pre mix margarita mix and just cherry lemon. And it's really it's Good just enough. easy. It, yeah. You know, I like easy. On our labels, there's always a recipe on every label. So it gives you a suggested recipe for each flavor. Uh and it's just something simple. You know, I don't like doing some crafty where you have to go five fifty five other things. Just give me something I can make at home with what I got. Coffee yeah. and salted caramel. Yeah, you know I mean easy. I'm trying to think what I'd probably other than just the plane for like because in Montana where I live it's fixing on getting pretty cold. Yes, it is. You throw a little cider in there, and I think that plane with some cider would be it. So if you're going to do the cider, do the salt. We haven't done candy bar with it, but try the salted caramel. Salted caramel. Mm-hmm. It, it's it's. We've had some people that do that. I got a friend that does salt. Uh, I'm not going to rat her out, uh, but she takes, you know, pure leaf tea. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, a little in the 7 mm-hmm. and, you know, yeah. pure leaf tea. Yeah. Uh, she takes that and she drinks, you know, out, all the way out the neck of it. And then she just fills it back up with salt. The caramel shakes it up. And if you're ever at a race with me and you go into my coolers and you go to grab the pure leaf teas, <laughs> do not yeah. grab them. Be careful. Do not let the kids grab them. It is not going to be what you expect. Um, so that, yeah, that, hey, that's like the, that's the, the beautiful, that, I mean, tea and moonshine. It's like, that's, that's she, I mean, she, she grabs the pure leaf. I, I, I found this out, but I found it out by mistake. I was like, mm-hmm. got out of a race car. I'm like, oh man. Oh yeah. What was it? Whoa. <laughs> like what happened to the tea? They're like, 
oh yeah, you don't grab my wife's teeth. <laughs> I'm like, gotcha. You're welcome. Yeah. In more than three decades in Vegas, 360 world champions have struck gold. None have won more titles than the three that make up the inaugural Vegas NFR Icons class. Banners for Trevor Brazil, Charmaine James, and Ty Murray will be permanently lifted to the rafters at the Thomas and Mack Center. And on December 1st, all three will be honored at a tribute luncheon at Virgin Hotels Las Vegas. Get your tickets now. Go to nfrexperience.com forward slash NFR Vegas Icons for details. So transitioning from racing into the gaming industry, are you, you still involved with the family business? Yeah. So for me, like I said, I screwed up retirement worse than anybody ever met. Um, I When I retired, I thought, you know, that retirement life meant, you know, beaches and then moonshine on the beach and mm. all that sort of stuff. And yeah, I, I, I screwed up. I got the liquor company. I got a cleaning company. <laughs> uh, I do all of... Uh, uh, so my family with my father and, and most of the people in the rodeo industry, you know, know know the big fella, know Pop a little bit. You know, some know him well, some know him just from passing. My father is a great man. Don't be his son and work for him. Uh, anybody that's worked with their family knows that sometimes it doesn't work out real well. So I'm the only son that actually can deal with working with his father in our family. Uh, it's very difficult, but I, my dad and I have a little different understanding. We've been through a few more things. We owned race teams together and stuff. That was a really bad mistake. <laughs> <laughs> And so uh, we, we, we do really well with each other. But that being said, that means the South Point is his. Stay away. Yeah. Okay. Um, I go to meetings. Guys kind of, I get all the numbers. I get all the stuff behind the scenes. And everybody, you know, dad goes to me one day. He says, well, how did you know that? And I go, don't worry how I knew it. Just, uh, you know, and all the, everybody get, you know, hey, we need this from your dad. I go, hold on, let me see it. All right, hold on. Yeah. I'm, yeah, no, I'll give that one to mom. She can push that one. And <laughs> Go ahead. So you jump rank. Yeah, you know, sometimes you know, it gets too big. But so, uh, but we also have some casinos in Mesquite that not many people know about with, with our family. Uh, we have Mesquite Gaming, which is the Casablanca and the Virgin River Casinos. And those are the ones that me and my sister are more involved in. Uh, uh, my dad's partner forever, Frank Toady, his son Anthony runs it for us. And I'm out there. Uh, I don't go out there day to day, but Anthony and I are on the phone a lot. And we do a lot. I you know, go through our numbers. Pay attention. You know, I, I'm not saying I'm sitting out there running casinos. Sure. I have two businesses that are my own that I run uh, that, that take my day-to-day -day time, and that's I'm trying to do it just on my own on the other side. And so it, uh, it works out well for me. But the gaming business is where I will always be. I'm like my grandfather. I'm like my father. You're going to pull us from the buildings. You yeah. know I mean? Well, I, these guys are telling us that come Super Bowl, you're, you're in the mix always. of it all, too. No, yeah. there's been a gone. My grandfather was the first man to put a sports book in a casino. And my family is a long line of bookies. My great grandmother, her name was Careful Kitty. Careful Kitty. <laughs> Careful a, Kitty. Careful Kitty. <laughs> Careful Kitty was a bookie um, in the 19 teens in Nebraska, Omaha, Nebraska. No And kidding. we've been bookies forever. And so my my great grandmother was a bookie, and my grandfather he was a bookie. My dad's always made book. We we love the sports book. We that is what is our my dad's my grandfather's passions was sports and the sports books. And so there's ever since the dawn of sports booking in a casino, there's been a gone working Super Bowl Sunday at a sports book window. My dad did it forever. My grandfather did it forever. And uh, I, I've been doing it since I was 21. I've only missed probably two or three Super Bowls since I was 21. I always come home, work the window. Uh, you can come place a bet with me on Super Bowl Sunday. You the only one, or your brothers? Your brothers get into it too, or just you're no, just you're, me. You're packing on the gone. I'm I'm, I'm the Bowl. one that works the window. I just I <laughs> I love it. It's it's just a, a you know it's. My brothers have their own casino related businesses yeah. and so they got their own things going on and I I go and always work a window. I always back when you had to have your sheriff's card, you're too young to remember those things. Um, <laughs> you know, back in the old day you used to have to have a gaming card. Yeah, you know, I always kept it current so that I could come and work one day a year at the at the sports book and and I still love it, man. It's so much fun. It's it's the coolest day in sports betting when you That's awesome. It, it's it's still just it's so cool. And then you got the Vison studio now sure. right there in the South yeah. Point. So they they got the Vison deal that but last year they mic'd me up. So like even as I was working the window talking to people, they could they could ask me questions from the studio, like which way is the line moving? I'm like I don't know. I'm just taking bets. Leave me alone right now. I got a line 200 people long. <laughs> well, the the crazy thing is though is that that part of the business has changed so much because yeah. like oh, yeah. when when I was in Logandale, the Masters was going on. Okay, so I saw the Casablanca and, mm -hmm. and ate dinner there at the steakhouse. That's Catherine's. that is that's Minnie a, Michaels. That's yep. a Catherine's really awesome. really nice property. But the sports book. When, when I came down and, and had lunch with your dad and Ryan, I, I sat down and I was watching some of the masters and I get it. Like you're sitting in a comfortable chair, 
with a week long sporting event going on, and you can just sit there, have a couple of beers, play some prop bets, and I, I, I could see myself in the future. March Madness isn't as big for me, but some events like the Super Bowl or the playoffs, just coming in, sitting down in a chair, and the only place I got to go is the bathroom, which is about eight <laughs> steps away. So you know I mean, both directions. You know, you, you guys have done a really, really good job putting that together. And, and listen, March Madness, it may not be your thing, but March Madness is the biggest. Like Super Bowl is the biggest one day event, right? But March Madness ain't nothing like it. You get people that fly in from all over the country. You know, the 16 seed, you know, Prairie View, A&M, <laughs> Southwest, McNeese, North State, you know, I mean, all these, you know, and these people come in, their team is in, the, you know, and they come and it's the coolest vibe. It's, it's Super Bowl is one day, right? One day. And the, the you watch people, my favorite thing is, you know, they're doing the coin toss and now we bet on the coin toss and you hear people, half people yell, yay, half people yell, boo, you know, and, and, but your window's sitting there and you see the guy, you know, that they've done the coin toss, line, everybody's lined up and you see the guy from across the sports book, you see him running and you're like, oh, he's trying to make a last second bet. He's coming. He's got his hand money. Yeah. And you're looking, you're like, look back at the screen. <laughs> you look at him. You got your finger on the, on the, on the 101 or 102. You're like. What's he want? What's he want? And he's, he's wearing, he's wearing a Tampa Bay. All right. He wants Tampa Bay. So I type it in. You're like, how much? How much? And he's, you know, he's like hundred, like hundred dollars. You print it. And they, you know, it goes off the board right as he prints. He's like, thanks. I'm like, what'd you bet? He's like, oh, I figured you bet Tampa Bay. He goes, okay, good. You know, it's, it's just, it's so much fun when you see like the, the, the people that just, the, and then you get the ones those days that have never bet before in their life. And they walk up and they're like, they walk up and they go, I've never done this, so I want Tampa Bay. Okay, do you want them with the points? Do you want them without the points? Do you want what's that mean? Okay, it means that you have to win by six points. If you win by three, you lose. Well, that doesn't make sense. It pays you better if you hmm. And you're like, Ma'am, there's 200 people in line behind you. <laughs> Can we I'm try, not trying to rush you, trying to be nice, but there's a long line of people in the kickoff. They're they're doing the national anthem. It's coming up. In a hurry. And so it's so much fun. It's just the whole vibe, the whole atmosphere. And then I have a roll at my window since I only work one day a year. You come up to a window and you try to do a round robin bet, or you try to do some really stupid random parlay. I'm yeah. looking at you and go, go to another window. Get out. <laughs> now, do you have a favorite story within those bettings? I mean, there's there's a lot of stories. The the fun thing for me that that my favorite story is just really about. I take it very serious when I do it. I, it's fun, and I'm I'm bringing on the race car driver doing it, or I'm bringing on the Gone family, you know, doing it. Or I, there's all these things that you come in and want to take pictures for social media stuff, and my PR team wants it, and the spot, you know, and so you, I have all these ancillaries going on, but I take it serious because it, it's it's real, and I have a whole line of people that. If their drawer doesn't balance that day, they're in trouble. Yeah. Well, it's not right if my drawer doesn't balance. I go, <laughs> sorry. Yeah, no big deal. Yeah, no, it, it's so I take it very serious. And, and for every year, I've been doing it since I was 21. And I've missed a couple of years. So for 25 years, I have never not balanced. Except once. Mm. When was this? Nobody hangs me from a door, Johnny. <laughs> <laughs> my grandmother did it once. <laughs> And two years ago, I didn't balance, and I was furious. I was embarrassed. I was mad. Everybody's like, it's okay. Went in my pocket, pulled out the 300 bucks. I was short, and I'm like, this is mad. I was mad. And I realized that somebody worked my window for about 15 minutes because I had to go pee. I go, hmm. Hmm. So this year, I, I, I told the guys, I said, when I go to, um, I didn't go on break. I said, if I, if I go on break, nobody's touching my window. I'm like, so I go to get counted out, the sportsbook director. He counts me out, and I'm like, $8,000 off. I'm like, what? Count that again. Oh, oops. He miscounted a couple things, and I balanced to the penny again. And I'm like, I was going to like, come unglued on people. So for me, all the customers have stories. But for me, it's I take it serious. I want to balance. And you get, you get people that you're paying people out. People come with tickets to cash, and it's in and out of monies. And there's no, I don't use a cal Everybody else over there using calculators. I'm like, type it in. I got it. Give you change. Run out the door. And I get, uh, my goal is always every year, I like the busiest window because I like the challenge and it's fun because people bet for me. Go fast. Try to go fast. And I do try to go fast. Yeah. And so for me, I get the busiest window. Uh, probably four out of the last seven or eight years, I've been the, the highest 
uh, volume window at the hotel, and I always like to make sure I balance to the penny, and I have every year, but once. Still mad about that. Yeah. That just one takes time. one time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'll remember. Yeah, well, Brandon, like... the non-balancer. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> uh, blueberry. <laughs> When I got to ask you this is um, the South Point. One thing that I love about the South Point is, I, I mean, I'm not a Vegas guy. I'm not a city guy. And but when I come to Las Vegas, the South Point feels like it literally is at home because it has such a Western draw. Of course. And appeal. And so when that property was built, was the world class equestrian center that you have there. Was that a no brainer or was that I mean, what was the thought process on that? Because if you've never been to South Point. I mean, you got to go. We would say the world's, but we don't know if there's some random place in like Russia or something. Yeah. But it's the country's largest indoor equestrian center. Okay. We have 1,300 plus indoor climate controlled stalls. We have three indoor covered arenas. You know, we, we, we take pride in it. Now, you want the truth of how the, this, this, but the brilliant mind of Michael Gaughan and Frank Toad, these two geniuses they are. You want to know why it was built? Yes. To pacify my mother. They are smart. Mama's always right. They're, they're smarter than I they, thought. You've heard Women this before. Women have control. Yeah. yeah. Have you heard the story before? I haven't, but I believe every they're moment like, that it is. If you've ever met Polygon, by the way, if you've met Polygon, you would understand why he's trying to pacify her. <laughs> <laughs> Behind every great man is a woman that runs, that definitely runs that one. And when he built the Orleans Arena, so you guys, you know, the Orleans used to be you know, right. one of our casinos. And, right. and him and him and Frank had this big idea to build the Orleans Arena. And so my mom's like, ooh, this will be great. We're going to have horse shows there. We're going to do this and that. Yeah. So they build this Orleans Arena. And as they're building the arena, Dad and Frank realize that, you know, this really isn't the right location for equestrian events. It's, it's Tropicana, you know, off the strip, off the freeway, a little more of a local, you know, it's just, we're a local casino at South Point, but it's just it's kind of far, you know, it just doesn't, it doesn't it's quite. It's a hike. Yeah, it's, it's not, you know, quite convenient. And then as they built the arena, they like overbuilt the crap out of it. So they made it like way bigger than they were expecting and way nicer than they were expecting and put this big, beautiful, the Orleans arena is gorgeous. Yes, it is nice. And they got done. I'll never forget. I was sitting there the day it got done. Dad and Frank, everybody, they're doing the walkthrough and everybody leaves. It's just my dad and Frank and me hanging out in the back. Waldorf and Statler. I call those two, by the way. If you've ever watched, seen the Muppets, the two old guys in the, <laughs> in the balcony, that's my dad and Frank. And they're sitting there and they're like, Mike, we got the ball off. And they're, they're telling each other how great they are. And it's a pregnant pause. And they go, Frank looks at my dad and goes, Mike, you realize we ain't got a freaking clue what we're talking about. My dad goes, yeah, but the Fertitas ain't got one. We got the we got. <laughs> <laughs> And so I'm like, oh, okay. But what happened was that was supposed to be the equestrian center. And it turned into the Orleans Arena. And so my mom got all mad when she looked at it and was like, oh, this is gorgeous. And dad goes, yeah, we can't do the horse events here like that. She's like, well, wh- why? Yeah, what do you mean? So she, he was in big trouble. So he promised her that the next place, they was, the South Point was, Coast was already planned, he would do it there. And now, if you really look at location, if you look at where, what's there, that was actually a brilliant idea, having it where it's at. And so it really was just to pacify my mom. And what he really thought was he was going to build this equestrian center, build all these horse stalls, build this arena with, for horsing events. And that, you know, at some point it, it, it would, if it, you know, when it didn't work out quite, you know, because really who's ever done that? That's, I mean, stupid. Who's going to really, uh, well, he would turn it into an arena again and do something else with it. And in the end, it ended up being the greatest mistake of his life. And he now will say it was never a mistake. It was planned from the get go. And he knew what he was doing <laughs> from the start because Waldorf and Statler were never wrong in the balcony. Yeah. And so, yeah, that was, it was to pacify my mother. And then that's how they got the Orleans or the, the South Point Equestrian Center. And then from there, it became, it's, it's grown. I mean, we it turned into the Prefer Pavilion, which is the two, you know, sides along with the main equestrian center. Now you got the Farnham Arena out back. Um, anybody that's been coming a long time remembers it was just the Orleans Arena. And then we had an old covered arena outside. Yep. Well, then it wasn't enough. We, the events were getting too big and they need, so we built the Prefer. Oh, and by the way, let's add 70 bowling lanes upstairs so we can get the USBC to do, bo- I mean, he's just like, hey, hey well, and then they needed more practice pens. He said, well, let's put the Farnham back where we used to have parked the cars. And, you know, then he bought the 100 acres over here because we don't have enough stalls when we do the World Series of team roping. So, you know, it just it kept growing. And, and you said Ryan Ryan earlier, um, Ryan Growney, our general manager, um, Ryan is is part of the Growney brothers uh, family. Mm-hmm. He's a nephew of, of the rodeo company. And when he was in high school, he used to go work with the Growney brothers. And he's 
He's he's he's got some cowboy in him. He does. You know, gr- Grounding does. knows what he's doing. He's oh, yeah. he's and so and he's a pretty boy face too. That's why. Yeah. Then that um he's the pretty boy. He's got the quaffed hair. I'm in here with you know. Yeah. I, I need more freaking hair plugs, and I'm like. You know, he's quaffed. He's, hair. he's been staring at me the whole I'm like, God, that guy's got yeah, great hair. He is on the wall oh, over oh, is he on the yeah. wall there? Yeah. 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 No, he's he's yeah. got that perfect hair. Yeah. He, you know, dad shows up and like dad broke his arm recently. And so he's showing up in 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 swimming trunks and like t shirts, you know, to work. And Ryan's got the press suit and tie. And I walked in here and I realized when I got dressed this morning, I was taking kids to school. I'm running out the door and I go, Oh, grab, I grab the jeans that have holes in. You know, that's me. And Ryan's like, He's got a, hey, he ties a double Windsor too, yeah. just so you know. I mean, I'm not ashamed to say that when I grow up, I want to be like Ryan. <laughs> right. Like, <laughs> I mean, Ryan, yeah. No, right. Ryan, Ryan, Ryan's dead sexy. I'm the first, and, and the employees we walk around, I've known all these employees, you know, a long time. And they, you know, Ryan one day goes, why do these employees tell you things and not me? And I go, hmm? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm Ryan. I mean, I, you look like a, you look like a corporate suit and I look like, hey, I'm your buddy. Yeah. You know, so. But no, I love Ryan does a brilliant job for us. But as we added these things, Ryan become the general manager and it just, it, it flowed Ryan and, and he is a cowboy. He's, he's, yeah. you know, he, he's a, he's, a, he's a ranchero. He's, you know, he goes and does these things and he knows all the people and the people know Ryan and he's great with that industry. And we've grown that, that South Point Equestrian Center into, of course, you have the, the, the great Steve Stallworth. Mm-hmm. I mean, Stallworth is absolutely one of the, just, it's a coup that that we ke- have kept Steve Stallworth as long as we have because he should have left us years ago for many other things. Yeah. And Stallworth just keeps digging out with us. And but it, it's just it's awesome what that arena's become. And when you look at it during the recession, you know, uh, from 08 to 13 when everybody was down, the South Point never was down year over year. It always was one percent, two percent. It was just it just stayed. And that we we accredit that to. The, the equestrian center. It's just we kept it busy. We kept people coming. We kept people that wanted that still were trying to go do stuff. We kept it there, and and that equestrian center has become. You ask anybody. I mean, you guys have traveled. T- take a take a regular cutter, a rainer, uh, any of the normal horse events that that the everyday guys, the Western pleasure, anything like that. When you roll up to an, not knocking other arenas. Don't. I'm not knocking a cow palace. I'm not knocking. The stockyards. I'm not knocking. I've been to the Cow Palace. <laughs> um, but I'm, no, no, but I'm not. And, and even uh, what's the place they do the NCHA cut in the final thing in, in Fort Worth? God dang it, I remember. Dickies. No, no, it's the it's the Cowtown. Will Rogers. The Will Rogers. Will Rogers thank Rogers, you. Yeah. I'm like it's the Will Rogers. I've been there a ton of times. My mom and sister and all that. Yeah. But when you roll into these places, it's it's just like any other place. You roll in, it's hot. You got your tack. You got your your horses. You got all your stuff. You pull up. You find your stalls. You unload all your stuff. It takes you three hours in the heat to get all your stuff, get your stalls bedded, get your hay, get your animals fed, get them watered, get everything. You, then you find the place to park your truck. You unhook your truck and trailer, take all your clothes out of your, put them in the back of the truck. You drive to your motel room. You get checked into the motel. It takes you an hour to get all your stuff because you're going to be there a week and a half. And then you you get out and you go, oh, God, time to go check on the animals. You drive all the way back to the Will Rogers to check on the animals. You know, you got people that have to check on things. You pull to the South Point. When you ride under the equestrian center, the bellman and the hotel check-in is at the corner. So the bellman come, grab your luggage, you check in, get your room key. Then we got the, the M&M guys that show up and grab your tack, grab your feed, grab all your stuff and say, okay, you're, you're in barn B in stall 45 and they take your stuff for you. All you got to do is get your animal there and then you got power in every single stall. What most of the people do nowadays, they put baby cams in. There's Wi-Fi all through the equestrian center. All these guys put Wi-Fi so they can see if their horse. What's the water look like? There's still food, you know. I wonder what Cupcake's doing right now. <laughs> but the crazy Blueberry. thing is, yeah. <laughs> I mean, as as nice as it is for for horse people, you guys have have also thought outside of the box because if I'm not mistaken, there's been water in that arena before, correct? Have you ever seen the picture? No, I haven't. Oh, seen I'll show you the, the picture. picture. We'll show. You, uh, this doesn't work. Once again, not a work for radio, but uh, you guys get to see it. But it was jet skis, correct? indoor yeah. jet ski racing. Um, it was only going to happen once. We promise you that. <laughs> uh, it worked. The county, I think, is still mad at us for that. Uh, and it was absolutely the most amazing. I was in. I was not here, unfortunately. I was out racing, but I had them sending me pictures and like giving me daily updates. It was the coolest freaking thing you've ever seen. So anybody that's been to the South Point knows what the Christian Center looks like. That is it, full of water. Oh wow. gosh, that's yeah. a lot of water. Because why not? 
But because, it took a minute. Because I can. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. No, it was absolutely unreal. They feel, they've done jet ski races. We've done car races in there. We've done mo- uh, the late, great Gene Romero with the flat track, AMA like mm-hmm. flat track yep. styles. Yep. We've done flat track racing in there. RC do, cars? They've done, well, they do BMX. normally the RC cars they do upstairs in the exhibit hall. But, but BMX, we do BMX in there. We've done a monster truck show. Not really big enough for monster trucks. Uh, but I mean, it, it, it just, it turned into an event center. You know, I mean, it's the equestrian center, but the BMX kids loved it. You had stalls as garages. How great is that? You yeah. know, I mean, it's, it's just, it works out great. It, we, we've learned unique ways to use the stalls for certain people. We've, we've learned how to, and, and that's, that's the great thing about Stallworth and his team and Ryan being in charge. We think outside the box, this thing has turned into so many things that we never thought it would do. Yeah. That's unreal. It's cool. Yeah. The, uh, and you know, it's got that the uh, what's the what's the bar upstairs there overlooking the deal? Well, so it has the saloon. It's the saloon, the saloon yeah. but it's it, it was supposed to be the Saturday night bar, right? There's actually a great story. You know, the chandelier that's out with the cowboy. With the cowboy, on. yeah. That's a famous story of of it's a real story of a cowboy in Oklahoma back in the 1960s or something swinging from a chandelier at like the 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 original national finals rodeo. Well, I and I'm not going to do the story justice, but. That cowboy is a real cowboy. There's a real story, real picture of that guy hanging from it. My mother loved that story. And so they had the bronze made, and that's what it's about. The grandson of that cowboy was in the arena with my mom and dad walking through or something like that. And he's and they're like, oh, that's a great looking bronze. And they go, hey, you know who that is? They, he goes, no, I, I've heard the story, but I don't know who it is. They go, that's your grandfather. <laughs> <laughs> and so, yeah, but it's the the Saturday Night Bar, it's called yeah. the Saloon. It's, it's yeah. you know, whenever it's sponsored. I think it was Crown Royal for a while. I think it's Cinch now. Cinch, it might be yeah. Cinch Saloon. Cinch. Um, hard to keep up with Purcell, what he sells around there. Purcell always, you know, selling, he'll sell, listen, Purcell, he'll sell your forehead if you give it to him. I'm, trust me, he'll get it Genuinely. done. Genuinely. Yeah. <laughs> Impressive. If you ever get the opportunity, ask him about the ice sculpture. It's a thing. <laughs> it's a thing. Just saying. It's a thing. Purcell will sell anything. I and like so, it. but it's gorgeous. It, it's the yeah. go- most beautiful bar that re- that never gets used except yeah. for events. You know I mean? It's, it's awesome. It's beautiful play. Overlooks the arena perfectly. Yeah. Yes, it does. A couple step down, you know, really nice deal. Yeah, no, it's impressive. It, and it's just, I mean, the concourse there, when you walk in there and you've got, it's like they've got the NRS trailers or whatever trailers mm-hmm, that they've mm-hmm. got set up there for the whole entire concourse. And yeah, it, it's truly unbelievable how, you know, I, I look at it like, man, what a pioneer. And well, he's just trying to make your, you know, his wife happy. But it turned out well. <laughs> yeah, no, it turned it. out well. Well, but and the other thing, though, when we do it, the, the typical of the way my dad does things, we try to make, like you said about employees, like you said about, you know, make it where it's, it's, you know, yeah, we could build an arena that's much when they built the Orleans Arena. Okay, there's a law that says you have to have so many bathrooms per person, blah, blah, blah. Well, okay, they doubled the men's and they quadrupled the women's because no woman likes to go to an event and everybody knows you, yeah. you see the long line for the women's and you see no line for the men's, right? And that's everybody kind of goes, oh, that's stupid. So dad quadrupled the number of restrooms per law huh. for the women's because we want the women to come back and be happy. Well, and they all go two at a time as well. So there's, yeah. there's no double, double up to the bathroom alone. But so, so when you do, you know, you make that concord, make it that big. We have the space. Why not make it that big? Make it where you can have these events there and, and had the forethought, Ryan, Steve, dad, when they did do it, yes, it was to pacify. But as it got bigger, they went, okay, when we expanded, they go, okay, let's expand. Let's really make this thing where you have that space. So our walkways aren't narrow. You know, the concourse isn't narrow when you're walking around it. You try the seats are bigger because by any time we do anything like that, Orleans, South Point, how do we pick the size? There's standard sizes of seats, right? We've been to some places where I mean, I'm a big boy. Yeah. My daddy's even bigger. You know, we sit in a chair and you're like, you know, yeah, that ain't comfortable. He goes down and he goes, what's the biggest seat they got? And they go, it's a 19. He goes, okay, I want 21. You know, it's like, Make a seat that a man can sit in. Yeah, you know, let, let, let's 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 be adults here. We don't need if you're to try to keep them in the seat for four eight hours. Keep them. Yeah, you want people. You know, make them comfortable. Yeah. So I mean, it's just the way he does things is really really good. And and fortunately, you know, for me, I've learned from some greats at it, and hopefully, I can continue that. And and a lot of those feelings for me continue. I mean, I'm I'm still racing. I'm still rodeo. You know, I still love those things. It's it's in me, and it'll keep going as long as I'm long as I'm around. It'll yeah. keep going this way. How old are your kids right now? Nine and 11. Okay. And driving me nuts. One's yeah. like me when it comes to women. The other's like me when it comes to sports. So I have the worst of both worlds. <laughs> and and especially the one that's that's like me when it comes to girls, because it's not the same world that I grew oh, up in. No, so no. yeah, I'm in trouble. Oh. Hey, he's in trouble. We'll, we'll yeah. Come back to me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm fine. I mean, he's this, this is a kid at 16 months old. You know, you take him to a bar and every, you know, little cute, you know, wait. Oh, it's so cute. So cute. So cute. Yeah. And so she walks by, waitress walks by, and he looks at her coming. He smiles. 
you know, she, oh, she walks by and he turns and watches her walk away. And then all of a sudden, the wife's sitting with a bunch of friends and he's 16 months old. And he, and he, once again, not a radio gag, but he looks down and he takes his eyesight from the, her back to her lower back. Yeah. And then back up. And my wife looks at me and goes, I didn't teach him. I didn't teach him. I swear to God, I didn't teach him. I'm like, I'm just like, man, that's in the DNA. That's yeah, that's genetic. That's a right done right there. I'm like, all right. George Strait said it comes natural. <laughs> I was like, all right. At one point, he said he say he had 81 girlfriends, and he said it in front of a girl and, and two girls and their parents, and these two girls go, yeah, we're Michael's girlfriend. He has lots of them. <laughs> and I'm looking at the dads going, he's, I didn't he, do it. He's in first grade. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, they share crayons together. Yeah. I don't, yeah. It's like, I, that's awesome. Well, this is this has been a blast, Brendan. Thank you so much for for your time and and you know the the great thing is it may have been a happy accident that South Point came together the way it did, but we've we've all been there multiple times, and and I can tell you from a burger at Steak and Shake <laughs> to a filet mignon at Michael's. I mean, you so we, 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 we get we get sushi. you from top to bottom. Yeah. And, you know, like I said, it, it what my dad the PRCA is a big part of us. NASCAR is a big part of us. You know, we do a South Point. For me, my little City Light Shine company, we do, of course, a bottle for that. My dad last year gave me permission. This was the NASCAR bottle was me fighting with him about something, and I got the NASCAR bottle on. Had to go to mom, and it turned into a <laughs> and it turned into a huge boon for him and for us. And then last year, out of the blue, I mean, when did I do this last year, Bree? I think it was late. It was late, it late. Was it was like end August. Of October, so, yeah, I, think. I mean, it, maybe it was. But I mean, that a dad said to me one day. He says, "I wanted to do." a bottle for like the winners at, but of course Pendleton sponsors. And, and I, look, we're, we're, we, we, we've always been, don't step on toes. Sure. I'm a moonshine. They're a whiskey. So I've kind of, I sneak between the road, right? I mean, I'm not a vodka. I'm not a whiskey. I'm not, I kind of, I can sneak in, but I'm not going to step on Pendleton's great to us. Great to the hotel. We love the Pendleton folks. So I can't give a bottle away. I get it. Dad goes, well, I want to give a bottle away for the road. You do it for your NASCAR. I want to do it for my rodeo. And I go, now remember, two two separate hats here. I wear a City Light Shine hat, right? And I wear the you know, South Point hat, and I'm like, Ooh, City Light Shine hat on. Would you like to, an, an order of bottles? <laughs> <laughs> Would you like a slot promotion? How many? Bottle? Yeah, I'm like, hmm. What flavor? And so we worked Blueberry. our tails off to get this yeah. PRCA bottle. I got I got the rights to the PRCA. Had to do all this stuff. Now, we, quick turntable. We're like, okay, what do we want, Dad? What do you want on your bottle? This is your bottle, not mine. What do you want? And he wanted Mr. Binion. Yes. So we, yeah. if you've seen the bottle, and it's a, it's the the, the big bronze, of course, and the yep. South Point is Mr. Binion, and big Dar family, huge to us, and Mr. Binion was great to me. I mean, I was old enough to at least remember Mr. Mr. Binion uh, with some personal things, so I loved him, and I part we did that deal, and so this year, Dad, I'm not going to announce what it is, but Dad just yesterday, or Tuesday, Tuesday told me what he wanted on the bottle this year, and so the bottle is going to become. Now it's going to become a legends type bottle. Let's just say that. Very nice. We have to get permission from the family and stuff like this. But uh, Dad, uh, we were talking about doing, you know, roping, doing whatever he wants to put on it, and he come. And Michael Gone is very fickle. Waldorf and Statler. He told me he didn't want that. Then all of a sudden yesterday, he forget that he ever told me he didn't want it, and he said, "I want this person on the bottle." And I go, "Yes, sir." I go, "You make that call. I'll get you the artwork." And he goes, "Okay." So the 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 South the CLS South Point bottle is going to be a Legends bottle. And this year, it will have another Legend on the bottle. And it's it's one that we're all very familiar with. And and once he gets permission from the family, we'll be able to talk about it. And it's going to be... I'm really... I'm honored that it's going to be this man on the bottle. So That is so cool. cool. So yeah. needless to say, these will become collectibles then. That's, if you're going to yeah. continue that, to do a different one. Yeah, no, we're, we're going to... You know, as long as I can sucker all Las Vegas events into the price they gave me and the PRC into the price they gave me, um, I can afford to do it, and so we're gonna we're gonna keep on doing these bottles every year for for the rodeo in December. And and Dad is it happy accident, right? Yeah, one of those things where Dad wanted this bottle last second because he liked the idea of it, which made me happy. It, it's my little company. I'll, I'm not going to say no. And he wanted Mister Binion, and then this year he says he likes the theme of legends, so he's gonna he he knows the legend he wants to put on it, and we're gonna it's it could end up being a series of just legends on on our City Light Shine bottle, and it's gonna be neat. That's awesome. I love it. The uh, Benny Binion deal, when I, for my very first time I ever came to Las Vegas, um, I somehow finagled my way into the South Point Arena for the Benny Binion Buck and Horse oh, yeah. Wholesale. And uh, I was, you know, one of the auctioneers on it and, and uh, you know, doesn't pay anything. I'm like, that's great. 
You got to pay for your own room even better. You know what I mean? Just going down the list. You have to pay your way. I mean, I had to buy my ticket yeah, to go yeah, in there, you yeah. know, but I was just so happy to be there. And they gave me a Benny Binion, um, like a engraved card holder mm-hmm, with the Benny mm-hmm, Binion mm-hmm. figure on there. But my favorite buckle, uh, I got two of them for the years that I did it was, a. Uh, it just says Benny Binion Buck and Horse and Bull Sale. And just for the fact that it says that is like, this is hands down my most favorite buckle because uh-huh. that's like, the, I mean, it's just quintessential. You look at what, what Binion did and his whole thing in Las Vegas and Rodeo. Listen, Benny Binion is like, I mean, that guy's amazing. First of all, we wouldn't have it if right. it wasn't for, and, and I always say it, it's still in my head. I call him Mr. Mr. Binion. Yeah. Jack Binion, who is still alive, is Mr. Binion. And I grew up with Jack as Mr. Binion. And Benny Binion was Mr. Mr. Binion <laughs> to me when I was little. And I, I'll never forget the. I'll give you my quick one. And then I'll, but so, uh, Mister Mister Binion, we're at the road. We're at the rodeo. One of the first couple of years, and it you know it started out a little slow when it first started. It wasn't the the thing that it is yeah. now. And my dad looks at me and says, "Hey, go find your grandfather." Um, it was 1987, 88. I'm 12, 13. So I'm a 12 year old, 13 year old. Dad says, "Go find your grandfather." Yes, sir. Where was he? I think he was in Mister Binion's suite. So I run upstairs and. I barge in this suite like I own the thing, you know, slam the door open, walk in, looking around, making, you know, rustling everything up. And he had his cane and Mrs. Binion, Teddy Jane was sitting right there. And he slams that cane down and turns from the seat he was in. And I remember seeing him going, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, took my breath away. And I go, oh, and I'm like, he goes, boy, come here. And I'm like, yes, sir, Mr. Mr. Binion. And I walked down to him. Mr. Mr. Binion. And I called him that to him. I was Mr. Mr. Binion because Jack Binion was Mr. Binion. So what's he? He's Mr. Mr. So I, I, he grabs me and he puts me on his knee and he goes, son, what are you doing? I said, I'm looking for my grandfather, sir. My daddy sent me to find my grandfather. And he goes, did you run in my door and knock? I said, no, sir. He said, did you just storm in here like a mess of hell? I said, yes, sir. You going to do that again? I said, no, sir. He goes, your grandfather left here. He went down to the Las Vegas events booth. That's three doors down. When you get there, what are you going to do? I said, I'm going to knock on the door politely, sir. He says, that's what I thought, son. <laughs> and he takes me off his knee, gives me a little kiss on the forehead, taps me on the butt, and I go, I go very politely walk out his deal, shut his door, and then I run down the hall. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, get a, <laughs> <laughs> but so he was such a nice man. Everybody was scared to death of him, but I, he, yeah, I was scared. I mean, I knew. Yeah. Let, that was My first job was eighth grade, uh, busting tables and washing dishes at the horseshoe. Um, he was still alive. It was right before Mr. Mr. Binion passed away. And uh, they had a union strike. And I looked at my daddy in the eighth grade and said, can I help Mr. Binion? And he goes, you want to help Mr. Binion? I said, yeah, I've seen the thing on the news. My dad would come home. I'd get out of school. He'd take me to the horseshoe. And no health card, no sheriff's card, no nothing. I'm 13 years old, busting tables and washing dishes at the horseshoe. That was my first job ever. That is awesome. Loved it. Family. Loved goes back to family. Love the Binions. Yeah. Well, I, I tell you what, man, it's been so awesome. Uh, this has been, I'm sure we could stay here for two more days and just listen to these stories. That <laughs> well, it might be, here, I so. forgot the first time. So you're being yeah, polite right. to me that yeah. I didn't, you know, I blew you off once. So right. thank you. <laughs> I won't, I won't hold it against you at blueberries, but <laughs> well, we can only donate so much to the South oh, Point God. gambling fund though. Yeah. Um, Listen, just buy a bottle of shine. Forget the South Point. That guy's got plenty of money. Forget him. He's got plenty of cash. Just buy a bottle, buy a bottle of blueberry. Would you? Let's Amen. go. I, I couldn't even afford that. Back then. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you guys. I appreciate yeah. it. It was honored to be here and, and thank you so much and, and appreciate all you guys do. And, and especially what the rodeo world is to this family. It's done. I promise you the rodeo world has done more for us than we've done for it. Thank you. Well, it's, it's a reciprocal agreement. I, I mean, you guys have done so much for us as well. So um, from all of us to all of you, thank you to the gone family. Thank you guys. Awesome, man. Want to experience more of the NFR? Then visit nfrexperience.com. And we invite you to subscribe to NFR Extra on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, and wherever you're listening right now. If you like what you've heard on NFR Extra, we would love it if you gave us a five-star rating and tell your friends how to subscribe.